Hey guys, Sword here, and this is going to be Operation Dome number 48, or the 48th episode of the Operation Dome series, a series for my friends and I, where we're going to encase the entire world in glass and glass panes. As you can see here, we still got a lot of work to do, but that's nothing new. Let's move on from here. It's just school, the truck, the dog, what I want to do for this channel, and possibly something else random that I probably will go off tangent no matter what because that happens in every single episode anyways. So let's move on from here. That school. It's already been my first week of school. How was it for you guys? If you have not gone back to school just yet, then I guess I'll have to ask you again in an amount of two to three more weeks because some people either go to school on, on September or people are already in school right now or something along the matter of people don't even go back to school. I just don't know. Just feel free to tell me in the comment section below if whether or not you're in school right now and if not what grade are you going to go into and if you're already in school tell us how the first week or the first day has gone by just let me know that for the first week that i had it was great just with the spanish class and the broadcasting class it was great with my spanish class the teacher is so energetic that you just cannot get bored of that class so i really really enjoy a class and a teacher like that that you just don't easily get distracted. So I'm very very happy that if I am getting more and more fluent in Spanish then I'll actually have a better just I'll get better what, what's it called qualities for a job. That if I'm blah, by blah, blah, I cannot even talk maybe I should not take Spanish class if I cannot even talk right? Well that if I am bilingual then I will get better jobs and as well as if people are getting laid off from the job then I'll be probably one of the last people to get laid off since I know both language and it will actually help both the store and the customers as well because it's kind of frustrating to see that if you want to get help but there's not a person to help you with or yeah help you with anything then it gets kind of frustrating just imagine everyone else who doesn't speak English that they have to deal with this too of course, when they try to speak English, it's not that good, and as well as that, whenever I try to speak Spanish to them, it's not that good as well. But at least I'm trying. I could say less about all the other people who are actually working at the same store, just not actually even trying to speak Spanish. So I'll be able to get ahead of them, and as well as that, I'll be able to get better qualifications for more jobs or different jobs if I don't want to stick with one. Just let's see how well things are going. That if I am fluent in it, then I'll be able to speak both languages. And maybe I'll even have a translation channel for the videos I post up. So not only am I going to have Operation Bedrock, I'm going to have Operation Bedrock in, in Spanish. Or in Espanol. However, however it's going to go. I need to work with grammar in Spanish too. That's the most annoying part of it as well. Just the thing about language is learning the syntax and as well as learning the grammar of of a different language that what gets to me the most but if i keep practicing if i keep getting getting more and more stuff to learn i keep practicing every single day then i'll get better so let's see how well i'm going to learn at by the end of the school year so i'm going to take two semesters worth of spanish and let's see if i get any better from there okay so with broadcasting that i'm very very excited about that class because with that class or with a teacher that she has a, she has knowledge of the field because she actually works at a broadcasting station. So if I get to get an internship over there, then that will possibly help me out. That it's something that I want to do and possibly it's something I could actually get into. Because when I was working, a lot of customers did say that I do have a voice for radio or TV or broadcasting that I should actually look into it. I honestly did not see it myself, but every time when I speak to them, apparently I'm loud, I'm clear, I am fluent, and that I do not make that many mistakes. But whenever you hear me on YouTube, I am possibly the opposite. I may be loud, at times I'm not clear because I usually stumble upon my words. Maybe it's because that I don't go by a script, because I just like to go, just go with the flow with these commentaries. I feel free, I feel that it's genuine, I feel that it's actually just the person that you're hearing right now. That you're not reading off of a script, I just go by whatever happens. At times it may be great and at times it just may be terrible, but that's just me. I'm just human, I'm not perfect in any way. That That's how I kind of see it. Of course, scripted shows are very very great in their own merit, but for me, 
and for less players themselves when they are themselves you actually you will actually hear it that's just how i see it so maybe just maybe i'll be able to actually get into broadcasting or to the internship or somehow or matter of that and they do say i have a broadcasting voice then that's something i gotta work with that i could possibly work at doing a broadcasting type of tone maybe in the future videos or maybe just with practice videos that if I sound different in one video or another video then you will know just I don't know how else to explain it because I honestly don't think I have a broadcasting voice at some time maybe it's because of how I'm actually speaking to you guys rather than how I speak to other people like I said in another video that I speak to customers in a different tone I don't know what it is but it's probably because I'm actually interacting with them face to face rather than just me speaking to a microphone and you hearing me speak to a microphone. I'm just talking to a microphone at this point looking at a TV screen. So it's not much of an interaction per se. I just, I just don't know. It's something I gotta actually work with. Especially when there are people who are on broadcasting, they get to interact with real people. So I guess it's that type of difference that what makes commentators on YouTube a lot more different than the broadcasters or anchors on a news station. I guess that's how it is. I don't even know if I'm making any sense. Does any of the words I've said so far make any sense? If not, then feel free to actually explain this better than I can ever do. Just, I kind of suck at explaining things. Oh well. But again, let's see if I actually do have a broadcasting voice and let's see if I could actually get an internship one way or another. If I could just work on the broadcasting team, then so be it. I'll be able to do or at least experience on what to expect if I were to ever go on TV or something along the matter of that. Okay. So what else is going on? What else is going on? One of the things is that, let's talk about the Pomeranian. She has escaped us, or she ran away from us three times so far. That the first time, it was by accident. Or well, all three were by accident. What am I saying? Is that that Pomeranian is so eager to leave. I have no idea why. Honestly, we fed it, we took care of it, but at every given at every given chance she'll sit or she'll be near the front door and if you open the door she'll be the first one to bolt out so that is the thing we actually got to take a look at and we got to actually be aware that she will try to escape at any given opportunity if you open up the back door she won't even go near the back door you're gonna have to actually pick her up and put her outside so that she could actually use the restroom and come back inside because of course with all the other dogs she's a little bit intimidated but as far as we know she has probably been abandoned or probably have been abused because the way that her fur is actually looking, it's just, it doesn't seem like she's been properly groomed or anything. She looks like she's been living off the streets for the while, for a while, for the while, for a while. Grammar here. Okay. For a while. So that's how we found her. We found her on the streets. No collar, not anything that would identify her as being someone else's dog. But other than that. So the first time she got out, I was chasing her around the neighborhood barefooted and after about a good 15 minutes, she actually went into, well first, she actually went up to strangers and the strangers didn't pick them up. She went to another stranger's home and she got out of that home as well because the door was still open because they didn't want the dog in the house and then she went to another person's backyard and I went to the backyard as well. The stranger came out uh, out of his house and actually went to the backyard and closed the gate behind me so that he was trying to help me actually pick up the dog as well that she didn't go to him, she went back to me. I don't know why, but she went back to me cuz she went she went up to other strangers but she didn't go to that one. Well, either way, the guy was nice and he helped me out so I thank him for that. I was able to get the dog, I was able to get back to my house and that's what that's went on for about a good three to four days before she got out the second time. That's because my mother did not notice that she actually went out. And we spent a good 20 to 25 minutes actually chasing the dog. That she thought it was a game. At that aspect, that whenever we get close to her, she will actually run off the another direction or the opposite direction. She will just keep running away. She knew that she knew who we are. She knew that we'd take care of her. But every time when we got close or every time she comes by us and we try to actually pick her up, she'll just run off in another direction. So after another five minutes of trying, we just gave up and went back to the home. 
About a good five minutes later, my mother was worried about the dog, so she went outside, and there she was, out in the yawn. Blah. Yard. Lawn. Yard. Yawn. Do you see how I... Ah. I combined two words. Other way. Either way. Just... I'm just messing up, people. This is why I can't go to broadcasting. But, of course, they're reading off of a teleprompter, so maybe that's why they stutter less if they're reading off of the teleprompter. Okay. So, with... That, with that situation, that my mother went outside, she was out on the front yard, that she tried to get the dog, but then she was going off the dire different direction. My father says, I'll just leave her, or just let's try something else. That we just leave the door open, we don't even go after her, she actually ran back inside. So at least she was smart on that one. The third time that she got out. A good 20 minutes, we didn't even actually bother going after the dog. We just looked at her, and she was just going down the streets and everyone else's yard, and that's how it was. She didn't come back to us whatsoever, so we just figured that she'll either come back to us or that someone else will actually pick her up. And that was the kind, that was the case. That was actually the case. That after 20 minutes, and she actually went down a few streets, she actually came back to the first block that we lived on, and one of the other neighbors actually got out of his house and the little pup actually ran up to him. We actually had to tell him to pick her up before she actually ran off again because that's what she will do. And he picked her up. We were able to walk over there and pick pick her back up and take her back to the house. We told him that it's been abandoned, it's a stray, and we're looking for a good home for her. So if you know anyone that wants the dog, then there's there's you know where to contact us. And be warned that if you are going to leave or open up the front door, keep an eye out on the Pomeranian, because once she gets out, she will not come back. Now, you would actually have to get someone else to pick her up and take her back to you, because that's, we just thought that that's how she lived. We just figured out that she probably just lived off the streets or lived off of different families, that every time that the family opens up the front door, she goes out and then looks for another family, because she goes to anyone else but us. I don't know about you, but if someone's taking care of me, I would not just run away. Ah, well, there's stories like that. I just don't understand, but I guess that's the thing, that they just live off of different families, they travel every other place, and that's just how their life was. Either way, we are still looking for another home for the Pomeranian, so if we were to find one, then we would just have to tell her what she's like, what she does, and the fact that you just cannot leave the front door open or you whenever you do open the front door keep an eye out on the pup otherwise she will actually get out and you will have a hard time getting her back unless you have a fenced off area then by all means let her out in the front yard either way that's it for the pomeranian now for the truck that remember when i talked about or even showed you the pictures or even the video about my bumper getting hit or my truck getting hit and the bumper is pretty much destroyed yeah so what happened last week that we went to the guy's house and we just told him straight up that we were, we were going to look for an estimate and you guys are going to have to pay for it. And they actually agreed. The guy and his mother. Well, I don't think the guy agreed, but the mother said that, yeah, we will pay for it. So we went out of the way to actually get the cheapest estimate and the part for the less price. That the, the part itself is going to be $400 and then the labor itself it's going to be $600. So in the total, it would be $1,000. And we told them about the price. We told them it was $1,000, and they, was, they said that they will contact us on Friday. They never did. So what we're going to have to do is contact them again or go to their house and tell them, hey, what's been going on? You guys said you would contact us, and you guys haven't done that yet. And if worse comes to worse, if they refuse to pay or something else comes up, then maybe a court order is actually needed. That one way or another, they're going to have to pay for it. Someone has to pay for the truck because eventually I'm going to get pulled over every single time because the license plate is not where it should be. And of course, with the bumper itself, it could be like a little bit of a hazard. I don't know. It's just some strange laws that we have that they're going to pull me over every single time due to the fact that the license plate is not where it should be and everything along the matters of what else goes on. That it's going to be kind of a nuisance, and in the end, again, someone has to pay, and if we have to take them to court, and if we win and they lose, they're going to have to pay the lawyers, they're going to have to pay the court fees, they're going to have to pay the truck, ultimately. So, 
Either they pay for it now, or they will pay more of it later. Either way, let's see what just happens. They say they will actually pay for it, and they say they're going to actually contact us, but they just haven't done so. So, either we're going to have to wait on them, or we're just going to have to do something about it. Either way, that's it for the truck, the Pomeranian classes. So, let's speak about Diablo. I am loving Diablo 3. I got the Reapers of Souls edition or the Ultimate edition for the Xbox 360 and I absolutely love it. That I play it a lot. I play with my friends and I usually play by myself. That I'm getting more and more into Diablo 3. If I were to go to Diablo 2 on the PC, I could possibly get into that as well. But I'm more comfortable with an Xbox 360 controller or a console controller than a computer. So that's just me. I just I think it's just easier for me to make videos on the console than it was on PC anyways. But that's another thing about that. Either way, that Diablo 3 is very, very fun for me to play. And if you like RPGs and if you like the Diablo series, I never actually got into Diablo, so I'm not really a Diablo fan. But Diablo 3 Reapers of Souls does it for me for the console. That it's very, very fun to play, easy to get into. And if you just like the gameplay or how things are at with RPGs, then I really, really recommend you play it, especially when you play with your friends. You get bonus experience when you play with friends, and you also could get items for your friends as well. So that's kind of like a good initiative to get more friends to play, because you could get items for your friends, or your friends could get items for you, and you could also find enemies that killed your friends, and you get to kill them as well for a lot of good loot. And it's just, you know, if you play Borderlands, you know how loot system goes. And you know the rarities and the legendaries and the items, the build-up systems, the skill sets. It's just all well done together with a lot of classes you could actually do. So far, I am liking the Wizard and I'm liking the Demon Hunter. Once I max out on those, I'm going to be moving on to a different class. Because there are achievements on the game as well, or trophies if you're on the PlayStation. And some of them just a little bit tedious but it's just with Diablo there's a lot of difficulties as well that you have I don't I don't know that I think in the original Diablo 3 that had easy mode but as far as I know with Diablo Reapers of Souls they got rid of easy mode so you have normal hard expert I think or master how you want to call it and then of course you've got the di the different levels of masters you got masters 1 through 8 or 10 I didn't actually take a look at that but that is, a, that is the most difficulties I've ever seen in a video game, no less. So I just like that concept that even if you're done with the hardest setting, there's even a harder setting on top of that, and there's different levels of the hard setting. And of course, there is hardcore mode. Of course, if you're, if you're a Diablo 2 fan or if you're a Diablo fan, you know exactly what it is, but I never actually heard of it until recently. Hardcore mode. Anything like Minecraft, you only get one life. So, if you spent so much time investing in that character and you die, game over, you lose that character, and let the rage commence. So, if you're going to play hardcore, play with your friends, and hopefully they have healing abilities. So that they will not let you down or die on you. It's just, it's great. And if I get around to doing a Let's Play on Diablo 3, then it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to be doing a lot of jump cuts or speeds or speed ups of the videos because there's a lot of exploration to do. Every time when you get back in the game, it's always a different dungeon. So not, not, both, not two games are the same. So that's why I love it so much. Or two files per se. And then of course you got all the other items. But again, if you know a lot more about Diablo then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, if you have, a, if you want to play a game that you can spend a lot of time on and not really get bored of, Diablo 3, and I recommend the Ultimate Pack Edition, so that you get more out of it. Okay, so let's move on with the channel. I think I did explain a little bit on what I want to do for this channel, and I want to get more in depth of this. In depth? In depth? No, in depth. Ah, silent P, whatever. Just, let's get more technical with it that I am here and I'm making videos to entertain you guys. That is my one goal, that I want to keep entertaining you guys, whether it be Operation Dome, Operation Bedrock, my Let's Plays, other videos, some way to actually entertain you guys. 
And for those of you who want me to shut up, because of course I get trolls a lot saying that you talk too much. Well, that's kind of the idea of a commentary. You don't go to a sports cast or you don't go watch TV of listening to a person on the news or the commentators on sports just to tell them to shut up. You want to listen to what they have to say. So, I guess that the trolls, they don't know much about commentaries. Either they want to watch gameplay by itself, if you want to watch gameplay, feel free just to mute this whole entire video. All you will see is just me putting glass on top of a ceiling. So yeah, apparently not many of them even know that there's a mute option on YouTube, but hey, it happens. But either way, the number one goal for me is just to entertain you guys. That's why I keep up with posting videos every single day so that I could actually entertain you guys. I just stopped for a second because I thought I was not recording the video this whole time. <coughs> Excuse me. That when I looked at it, there was a little bit of a new update with the Hapog capture system that you could start it at any given point. Like if you want a 10 seconds delay, after 10 seconds, it'll start recording. When I looked at it, it just set all zeros. I'm like, oh my God. Was I not recording this whole time? I got the audio, of course, but the comment or the not the commentary, the gameplay itself, I thought I didn't get. Now let me do double check to see. Okay, whew. I've actually had an episode where I forgot to record the whole entire thing. I was so mad. Okay, back to what I was saying. That I want to entertain you guys. That's my main goal. And I just talk about different things. Sometimes I repeat myself. I know I get that a lot. And it's because if people watch Operation Bedrock, whatever I said in Operation Bedrock, or no, mainly it's Operation Dome. Not many people actually watch Operation Dome. So if I were to say something in Operation Dome, not many people actually hear about it. That's why I repeat myself in Operation Bedrock. And sometimes when I say something in Operation Bedrock, when I want to bring it back up in Operation Dome, that's what I do as well. Especially for my Let's Plays that I know not many people actually watch. I get around 100 to 200 views for a Let's Play episode. And if I were to say anything interesting in the Let's Play, not many people are actually going to know about it. And it's kind of like a good topic to bring back onto Operation Dome or Operation Bedrock. It's just, I keep repeating the same things for a lot of the videos. It's because not, any, not everyone actually watches all the videos. And I know that. So that's kind of a thing to expect from this channel. And this is why I actually want to do more Minecraft videos. Because that's the only thing that actually gets people to watch my videos. If I were to say something important in one video and not many people know about it, it kind of makes me sad. Like, hey, I'm trying to say something important here, but you guys are not listening to me. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to try something different or try something else. So until the point where if I get an even amount of views for all of my videos, that's just how it's going to be. But as long as I'm able to entertain you guys one way or another, it makes me happy. Just... Let's see how well things will go for this year, because when I do the 100 video challenge, a lot of it is going to be Minecraft. That It's going to be just me working on Operation Bedrock, Operation Dome, or something along the matters of what's been going on in Minecraft. If I were to do 100 games, that's going to be post-commentary, because it's kind of hard to make a commentary while trying to fight off people. Especially when you're doing Call of Duty or something along the matters of that. It's really, really hard to actually make a separate commentary while you're playing a game. That's what a lot of people do nowadays. And that's what a lot of people actually do now. That whenever they actually go on Call of Duty or a first person shooter game or any other type of game where they're going to do a commentary on later, well, later on, of course, they're going to get the best clip that they could possibly get. And then they're just going to post commentary on it, post commentate on it. And people accept that because that's how it is. If I were to do a live commentary on a terrible game, not many people will actually watch. Who's going to watch a person who gets killed like like they get two kills and 24 deaths? I've had that happen before. It was just a terrible game anyways. But if I were to commentate on that, many people will not even take a look at it because they know that it's not good gameplay and they probably will not even listen to what the person is saying. What am I even talking about? I'm just going off tangent. I told you guys I'm going to go off tangent. Huh. Maybe I'll bring that in a different subject. Okay, <laughs> time to focus. I'm a little bit sick too because I've not gotten that much sleep. It's just on and off sickness, reminding me back in high school where I were to get sick every single week. I wasn't contagious, but I was just sick. <coughs> okay. Ah, <sighs> focus. Focus. Back to what I was saying. That I want to entertain you guys. Simply put it. 
if I make you smile, if I were to put some light into some situation, or if I were to make, if I were just to keep you focused and you enjoy the video, then I'm happy. If not, then I guess I will actually have to try better the next time. Because there's always room for improvement. Especially when I made about over 1,200 videos and I'm still going. But that's another thing. Just I cannot wait to get back to the 100 video challenge that I will tell, I'll talk to you guys. I'll tell you guys of what I think about the situations or the topics at hand or anything wrong in the mix. Ha. <sighs> The thing about commentary for me is that if I talk so much that my throat and my voice gets a little bit dry and I start coughing. How do people do it? Oh well. And I really don't, I can't stay focused. That's one of the other things. I gotta write, I gotta write note cards. Just think about the things I'm gonna talk about, the sub points, and stay on that. Otherwise then, I'm just gonna go off tangent and I'm just gonna lose train of thought and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna go crash. I'm just gonna crash. Up, oh, nothing in here. Time to go back to the tree dome. Other than that, for the hundred video for the hundred video challenge, I'm going to be answering a hundred questions. A lot of it's going to be on Minecraft, but if there's a different question for a different video game that I could possibly get my hands on, then I'll play that game for that question. But other than that, if you guys have any questions for me to answer, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And if I were to answer your question in the video, I will credit you verbally within that video and as well as that I will link your channel in the description of that video and annotate your channel at the end of the video giving you thanks for helping me out with something to do or something to talk about for that day. You can either message me on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. So there we have it. And if anyone else actually asks the question before you, because I will answer the questions I've actually had recently, especially when I actually answered 36 questions and all that got lost in the crash, I'm going to be answering those questions first. But if you do ask a question that another person has already asked, then I will let you know that I'm sorry, I've already had that question, please ask another question. It could be anything. It could be what if, it could be this or that, it could just be a scenario that maybe we get into, my thoughts about a video game, my thoughts about something, just nothing, honestly, nothing about religion, politics, or controversies. Because we want to really stay away from that. And in my personal opinion, a lot of people do those because it does get a lot of attention. Honestly, it does get a lot of attention and I really don't want to go around that method. But if it's a controversy that I actually have or I have a thought or it's close to home for me, then I possibly will put my two cents in it. But I'll probably go at it with a logical standpoint. Hopefully it's not too biased. But again, if you have an opinion on the internet, you're always against someone else. And whatever you say, it's true. And apparently you're an idiot. That's, that's how it is. If you have an opinion, you're an idiot. Everyone hates you. Welcome to the internet. Okay. Also, in a short note that SMO will... will well, I will say that... He's not going to be with us for a while due to the fact that his Xbox got the red ring of death. And how that happened was his little brother put a DVD in the Xbox 360 even though he told him not to, he didn't listen to him, and now the Xbox is useless. Unless if there's, in, if there's any way to actually fix that, let us know in the comment section below. And maybe it's, maybe it's the towel method or... Maybe some other method, I don't even know, but apparently there's methods to actually get rid of the red ring and some of them apparently works and some of them absolutely doesn't. But if that could be fixed in any way, let us know. If not, then I guess we're going to have to wait until he gets his Xbox or gets a different Xbox and he can give his little brother a broken Xbox. It's like, here, you want to use Xbox? Here you go. Next time, don't put DVDs in the Xbox 360. I, w I actually did that once, and I did get a red ring for about like five seconds, and it freaked me out. I'm like, okay, no more DVDs for the Xbox 360. It worked though. It actually worked. I just, it's, I, I just guess it's just that it's not really a good idea to put DVDs in an Xbox 360. They advertised it. Come on, people. It's not my fault. Just as long as it's still working, I'm happy. Okay, so. If I were to recap, talked about just the classes I've been taking, 
that it's going to take a little bit of time away, but I'm still going to try to get a lot of videos done. The computer crashed. I was able to get my intro, my intro, which I really, that's the thing I really needed. And then I could actually start making videos again. And it's just like, it's not like I forgot how to make videos. It's just starting off fresh. A lot of more space on my computer because usually I hoard up a lot of files. So I'm kind of happy about that. I'm not really too stressed on that. I just got to recreate the 100 video challenge and then we can just work from there. Then the Let's Plays, the other Let's Play I've had, it's gone. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to do a different Let's Play because I really don't want to go backtrack and do that all over again. So I'm probably going to be doing a Let's Play and one day I'll get back to the other thing. I think they're cooking something in the background. So if you hear that, I'm, I apologize. Okay, I think they're done. All right, then let's see, let's see. We talked about the Pomeranian. We're still trying to look for a good home just as long as they don't leave the front door open. We talked about the truck. We're probably gonna have to take them to court if they still keep ignoring us. And I wanna entertain you guys for the videos I produced. My God, that I'm sorry. I'm probably gonna have to go back on this. I honestly do. Because when I did Operation Bedrock 113, the original one, I had a perfect, perfect commentary on that. And then, of course, I got lost in the crash. So I'm going to have to get back on this in the next Operation Bedrock episode. Hopefully, I'll be able to put my thoughts into a proper thing. And hopefully, just hopefully, I am able to be coherent enough for you guys to understand what I'm trying to say. Just this part. Ugh. I'm not going to do another retake. Then, I guess that's it. That's it. As far as I know. How about that Amazon buying Twitch? Question of the day for you guys. Like, what do you think about that? Do you think that Amazon is going to actually ruin Twitch or is going to make Twitch better? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave that down in the comment section below as well. Before I start rambling on too much, I'm going to end off this video and hopefully in Operation Bedrock, I'll be able to get my thoughts in, in line. I'm going to write down a note card. I'm going to promise you that I'm going to write down a note card so that I could get to the points, but I'm not going to have it scripted because I want to actually explain it better. Okay. With that being said, let's, let's just hope everything goes well in the school year. Have a great day, everyone. I'm SorkingZero90, and as always, I will see you in the next video.